Hello and welcome to an explanation and tutorial on total and annual growth or total and annual return. First, what is it? It can be expressed in dollars or percentages. So for example, if something like a stock price grows from $5 to $10, that's $5 growth or 100% growth. Why do you care? Well, if you have a stock, a stock that grows from $5 to $10, that's important to you because that's $5 growth or 100% growth. Or if you're a CFO of a company and your revenues grow from $5 million to $10 million at some future point in revenues, that's $5 million growth or 100% growth. And that's important to consider. But it's also important to consider over what period of time. So is that growth, that $5 growth or that 100% growth, occurring over one year, two years, three years, five years, a hundred years. We're going to look at how to calculate this using algebra and also using formulas in Excel. Using algebra, looking at total return, we simply take the ending number minus the beginning number. So the $10 stock minus uh, the beginning amount, $5, is $5 growth. Or looking at percentages, we take the ending number minus the beginning divided by the beginning. So 10 minus 5 divided by 5. And it's important to consider order of operations. So 5 divided by 5 is 1 or 100% growth. Now that's total return. We're going to look at how to calculate annual return or compound annual growth rate. To do that, we use that same beginning piece we did up here for total return. Ending number minus beginning number but divided by beginning number. We add 1 to that and take it to the power of 1 over the number of periods of change. And then we subtract 1. So here's an example looking over just one year. 10 minus 5 divided by 5. That's 10 minus 5 is 5 divided by 5 is 1. So 1 plus 1 to the 1 over 1. The reason why we do 1 over 1 is it's one period, one year of change. So <clears throat> 2 to the first power is simply 2, minus 1 is 1 or 100% growth. But if we're not looking over just one year, we're looking over five years of growth, then we're going to use a slightly different formula. All we change is this 5 here. Everything else is the same. And so we take 10 minus 5 divided by 5, again, is 1 plus 1. So 1 plus 1 to the 1 over 5 minus that 1. So 1 to the plus 1 is 2 to the 1 fifth is 1.1487 minus 1, or 0.1487, or 14.87. So five years of growth. This goes from 2010, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. Now that's six years, but that's five years of growth. Growing from 10 to 11 is one year. 11 to 12 is two years, three years, four years, five years. So in other words, if we took $5 and grew it one time at 14.87%, two times, three times, four times, five times, it would grow to $10 over five, those five years of growth. Now, mathematically, if we're multiplying it out, we take the 5, multiply times 1.1478, 1.1487 1 because we're growing it that first year and doing the same thing the second, third, fourth, and fifth. Now we're going to look at how we do this um, in Excel. So here's a, here's a different example. Again, over five years, say we buy a stock for $250 and sell it five years later for $300. So the total return is simply $300 minus $250. At $50. Total return in percentage is 20%. We took the ending number 300 minus 250 divided by 250 is 20%. Now remember to do the order of operations and do the percentages, I mean the uh, parentheses up above. For total annual return, remember we use this formula where we take the beginning minus the end divided by the beginning 250 in parentheses then plus 1 to the 1 power, and then we subtract 1. 
Now it's critical that you look at the order of operations back from this page, otherwise your calculation will be off. Total annual return um, is also sometimes called compound annual growth rate. There's a way to, to uh, use formulas in Excel to calculate this. So we use an IRR formula and it looks over these six years but five years of growth. The, IR, the way the IRR formula works, the first number has to be a negative because that's the amount you're investing, the 250 in the stock, and at the end it grows to 300. So it wants to see a negative in the beginning and 300 in the end. And there are no cash flows in these years. So it's looking at these as cash flows. So you see we get the same number, the 3.1, over these um, six years or five years of growth. And it Excel sees that it's six cells or uh, five years of growth to calculate. You don't have to put in anything about the years up here in the formula. So it's just IRR, A10 to F10. Now, for instead of looking over five years, we want to look over four years of growth. We simply just do the formula over these years, 2009, 2010, 11, 12, 13, we enter zeros for these years again because there's no cash flows, but you need to enter something there, otherwise it'll confuse the formula. See how that changed? You have to enter something if you're gonna use that formula because it wants to know there are cash flows here. If you just took it out, it would assume it, there's fewer years in your IR calculation. So <clears throat> using the IRR, and just over those years to calculate an, a growth rate of 4.66%. When we look on, over just two years or one year of growth for the IRR from 2009 to 2010, it gets that 20%, which is the same as that one year growth we saw here to the total return here. So we've learned how to calculate total return in dollars, total return in percentage, and total annual return or compound annual growth rate. And we've done that using algebra as well as the compound annual growth rate or IRR using the IRR function in Excel. Thanks a lot.